I was always told when you grow up and you get a girlfriend, you get a lot of cool benefits. The one I was the most excited for, however... Can I have a back scratchy? No. Is the one I didn't get. Alright, so I have two goals for this project. One, it has to scratch my back. And two, it has to make my girlfriend jealous enough so that when this thing inevitably breaks, she'll step in and fill the role of scratching my back. <laughs> One can hope, okay? Okay, so here's the actual plan. I'm gonna take some linear rails, attach them to the side of the bed, build a little structure over it out of wood, because it's cheap, and then that should be able to slide all across the bed and then have something else on the top beam that'll be able to slide left and right, and then it had something else that can slide up and down. And that way, it'll give me all three axes of movement and I can finally rest in peace. Now you're probably gonna say, Tatum, how's it gonna find you when you're on the bed? I was getting to that, thank you. So what I'm planning on doing is taking a PIR sensor, taping up a little bit of the lens so it can only see through a tiny little hole, and then that will give me a signal whenever it finds the person laying on the bed. So for example, if I'm laying somewhere, it's gonna do a sweep with the x-axis, discover that I'm here, and say, oh, one, yes, there's a person here, oh, zero, there's not a person here. And then from there, I can do some cool magic mumbo jumbo to be able to find out, oh, this little slot that he's here, this is where we should stay. Or I'll just do it timing based because I'm moving soon and I don't really have that much time to work on this. I don't know. So I started looking at linear rails on Amazon and let's just say these are surprisingly expensive. It's not too bad if you're buying just one, but I'm gonna need approximately like eight feet worth. Thankfully, my brain was firing on at least two cylinders that day because I came up with a solution. 3D printing. I'm just going to 3D print a whole bunch of tiny rails on my printer and then connect them together. Now, I printed them in about one foot sections and then I'm just going to connect them all on the side of the bed. And by doing that, it cost me approximately $15 in filament. Much better, obviously. So I started printing them all and started attaching them. Now this was a really tricky thing. Since I had to print them in really small segments, I had to put them on and then make sure the other ones were lining up perfectly with each other, which took a lot of effort and time, I won't lie. But using my big brain, I was able to get them perfectly lined up by using a cool little math trick. I used a level, it, it wasn't, wasn't that special. Of course, why would that ever be the working solution? See, there's one problem with using 3D printed stuff. It's not always perfect. I had to print approximately 20 of these rails because some of them just kept coming out slightly off. So it made it so it wasn't a perfect smooth transition to go from one piece to the next piece. And this sucks because it was a really nice idea and it worked, looked really good. And I already built everything. So to fix all these issues, I came up with one idea. Let's just buy our way out of it. Not with those sliders though, that was really expensive. I'm not doing that, that's stupid. So what I decided to do was to use these linear rails that have more of a cylindrical slider instead of the other type. And with this, it though it is a little bit wider, they're really long and I can get two for a really cheap price. Not to mention they both came with the actual slider parts, which is pretty awesome. I stuck these on the side of the bed and you can see they slide really well. Here you can kind of see how I decided to drive the y-axis as well. I just kind of stuck two stepper motors into the bed and had them attached to the uh, sliders and that's going to pull it back and forth. So now that the hardware section is out of the way, it's time for the part I was really dreading. The code. Oh, the code. See, I've never coded a stepper motor before and I actually have no clue how to do it. Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Is it working? It's backwards. So I started by working on the z-axis to move up and down. I started off with a very slow program and it did work. Thankfully I didn't experience too many issues. That being said of course I did still experience issues. Now, this next part, I'm pretty proud of. It was a pretty big brain move. So, because our backs are not perfectly straight, 
or at least mine isn't. I was gonna have to find a way so it would be able to adjust for the curve in your back. Now, again, I could do that in code, but you know. I decided to 3D print out a little claw using plastic flexible filament. So that way I can push it down and when it finally hits the low spot, it'll hit it. And then when it gets to the higher spots, it'll bend to mesh to it, kind of. It's not a perfect solution, but it's the one I'm going with, so I don't care. And with that all done, finally, only thing left to do was test it. We finally got it working, and I was able to have my first back scratch. And it was awesome. Kind of. It was able to come behind me, lower down, and then slowly go up and down my back. See, there's one problem with this robot uh, that I'd have to fix in the future because I'm not going to do it now. It's a very light back scratch. You pretty much have to, it's almost like it's tickling your back, you know, kind of like that, which I like. I find it very relaxing, but it's not like, you know, hard scratching and stuff like that because I, I didn't feel like that. And realistically, it's more like a tickle your back robot, but that sounds really wrong. So I'm not going to call it that. But this was mostly just an idea as a prototype. It's something I kind of wanted to learn and do. And since I'm moving out very soon, I didn't have time to really perfect it. So I'm not taking it with me, unfortunately. So I just kind of wanted to get it working and use it while I still can. So the robot isn't perfect, that's for sure. It's got so much room for improvement, so many features that could be added. So there was a lot of compromises I had to make that I wasn't really wanting to do at the start. But due to time constraints and the fact that I'm moving soon and not taking this robot with me, my options were either build it really good and maybe use it for a day or build it to a point that it works and use it for the rest of the time. That's the one I went with. If you did like this video, feel free to leave a like down below and maybe a comment. If you want to subscribe, I am trying to upload a little bit more, but it'll be, you know, whenever the hell I feel like it. So yeah, if you enjoyed, awesome. <laughs>